Hello, I'm Dave from Dino PC, and this is the new Titan X. Once again, all the opinions on these videos are indeed my own and may not necessarily represent those of Dino PC unless stated otherwise. With that, let's get on with the video. The all new NVIDIA Titan X is here, and I mean all new. Running on their new Pascal architecture, the new Titan X 2016 model is a little bit confusing at first when you look at it, but we're going to take a quick and brief overview of it and basically explain what it's all about. So going over its stats, the new Titan X has 11 teraflops of performance compute power, 3584 CUDA cores, a clock speed of 1530 megahertz, 12 billion transistors, an all black design, and all for the low, low price of $1,200. If you're looking to play Minesweeper at 30 frames a second, then this might be the card that you've been looking for. All jokes aside though, this thing is insanely powerful. If Nvidia delivers on exactly what they've promised, you're going to see for the first time ever a single card that's going to be able to game at 60 frames a second 4K high settings. And it's going to be awesome. But what does this mean to the average user? Well, let's start with the price. $1,200. This is double the price of a 1080 graphics card. And, well, a 1080, you can, you can get two 1080s for the price of the new Titan X, which is quite scary. Is it going to be double the performance of the 1080? Almost certainly not. However, that is where the bad news ends. We'll start with that CUDA core count at 3,584. What are CUDA cores and how are they going to help you? CUDA stands for Compute Unit Device Architecture, and that might not mean a lot to you, but I'm going to explain it. Don't worry. Essentially, it is a specialized programming language that can leverage the GPU in very specific ways to perform tasks with greater performance. Basically, the more the better. However, this generation of CUDA is a little bit different to the last generation of CUDA because, of course, we are now running on the 14 nanometer chip process, which means that, for example, if you were to take, I don't know, the 1080s CUDA cores and then compare it to the CUDA cores of like a 980 Ti, even though the 980 Ti has slightly more, the CUDA cores perform better in a 1080. They are non-comparable because they are on a different chip process. All you need to know is, is that the Titan X has the most CUDA cores out of anything in Pascal range. That is going to help you with the performance of things like rendering, which you can use CUDA rendering on things like Adobe Premiere Pro, and of course, in video games. In fact, the power of the Titan X's CUDA cores is so great that there is no Quadro card on the market that's even better for rendering right now, which is insane. Unless you want to move up to Tesla, there's probably going to be pretty much nothing that's going to compare to this thing. The 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X is a little bit more simple to explain. If you think of memory bandwidth as a water pipe, and you have uh, a tank of water on one side full of water and a tank on one side that hasn't got any water in with the pipe connecting the two. If you have a thin pipe, we'll call this one the GDDR5 memory bandwidth, then it's going to be able to flow less water through the pipe at once, meaning it's going to be slower at the other end to fill up. However, GDDR5X is twice, got twice the memory bandwidth of GDDR5. So imagine just doubling the size of that, which means you get more information going to the other side. Effectively, this makes it faster, although all it actually is, is you're transmitting more data at once than before. The previous Titan had 12 gigabytes of GDDR5. This Titan has 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X. And while it is a little bit disappointing that we're not going to see high bandwidth memory in these bad boys, it is still a possibility for the near future. And I am hoping that we do get to see it because I can't wait to see what HBM2 can do. Let's put the transistor count into perspective. My 980 Ti has 8 billion transistors. The GTX 1080 has 7.2 billion transistors. So just think of 
the amount of sheer awesomeness that is the Titan X with 12 billion transistors. This, once again, is down to the 14 nanometer chip process, which means you can simply fit more transistors on a single die. Finally, we come to the big guns, the 11 teraflops of performance. Let's give this, again, some perspective. A GTX 970, in my opinion, one of the best cards that Nvidia have ever made, one of their best selling cards of all time, pretty much able to play anything you want at 1080p. And even if you wanted to do stuff like playing Fallout 4 at 1080p, you could still mod it to high heaven before you start seeing any particular downside in terms of frame rate drop. A great card and it only has 4.7 teraflops of computing power behind it. So imagine what 11 teraflops of power is going to be like in your computer at home. A teraflop is a unit of computing that represents a trillion floating point operations per second. To give you an idea, the more teraflops you have, the more floating point operations that you can do per second, which basically means the more teraflops you have, the more tasks you can do in a single go. With more teraflops, you can produce more diverse, more unique universes within games. And more is better. So, what do I think of Nvidia's brand new Titan X? I think it's insane. I think it's insane in performance, but more importantly, I think that their naming scheme is insane. The Titan X was also part of the previous generation of their GPUs. So looking for research on their new GPUs by simply typing in Titan X was a little bit difficult. If there was only one thing I could change about this card, it would most certainly be its name. Why not call it Titan X P, P for Pascal, or the Titan Y, or the Attack on Titan. I don't care what it should be called, but it shouldn't be called the Titan X because it's certainly going to confuse customers. You're going to have to call it like the Titan X 2016 or, or follow Nintendo's naming scheme and call it the new Titan X. As it stands right now, it's going to be very annoying for not just like vendors and, and other businesses, but the consumer. And at the end of the day, the consumer is indeed the most important person in the lineup because they're going to be paying the $1,200 for this insane beast. The price, I can understand, but the naming, why? <laughs> Even our good man Silas was a little bit confused when in his newsfeed, all that was popping up was Titan X, new Titan X soon to be reviewed and all this sort of things. When Silas was like, well, the Titan X, sure, that was like a year, what, what's happening? It's confusing, but nevertheless, I'm still looking forward to grabbing my hands on one. I don't think we're gonna be able to get our hands on this day one, but we can almost certainly put it in a water-cooled product and push it to the max. If you want to see that, then click that like button. If you enjoyed this video, then click the like button. If you didn't enjoy this video, then please leave a dislike. But let us know why in the comment section below. I tried to simplify things a little bit for you guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. And for all of those asking, why do I wear jumpers in my videos? It's because it look, makes me look less fat. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Who -bye. calls are proprietary? Cudicles are proprietary. Cudicles are proprietary parallel programming. You <laughs> proprietary program. Cudicles make things better. <laughs> the more cudicles you have, the more of a man you are. The more cudicles you have, the bigger that your penis is, most certainly. <laughs> I know what I can do, I can tell you guys a pretty good joke, okay? We here at Dino PC, we don't go on dates. The only kind of dates we have are updates. Boom, 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 boom! <laughs> oh, that's it, I'm gonna get some coffee. Oh dear. Fantastic, fantastic.